Okay, so today I will be talking about wallets, as I already mentioned. Okay, hopefully you all can hear me. Eh? You can all can hear me, you can, can see the screen, because I'll be showing the the step-by-step, -step, the methods on how to install MetaMask and so on. Okay, so <clears throat> when we talk about wallets, okay, basically what are wallets? Uh, think of them as your account, okay? When you want to interact in the Web3 world. Uh. So when you come across these terms, uh, Web1, Web2, Web3, what is it? What does it mean? Basically, Web1.0, when you think about when internet started, okay? You have your email account, your Gmail, your AOL, whatever. So back then, all the websites, they were static, okay? You, the static information, you have your email account, you can log in, you can go online and see all these accounts. Uh, I mean, all this information, lah. So this is Web 1.0, okay? And then, uh, when social media started, okay, it's uh, what we call as a Web 2.0 era, which is where we are now, okay? Web 2.0. So Web 2.0, uh, it started with Friendster, Facebook, Instagram, okay? Uh, you basically create accounts and then you have friends, you go on social network, okay? You what we do now is we create and we consume content, okay? But uh, do we get any profit from it? We don't because these uh, big companies like Facebook, okay? Uh, Instagram, they become very, very big, very, very successful, but then they profit from our content, okay? We don't, we don't get anything from it. So the, the whole uh, premise around Web 3.0, which is uh, what we are seeing now, is only starting. So firstly, it uh, has to do with cryptocurrencies, okay? Uh, when Bitcoin first started and then we have Ethereum and so on. The whole idea is on individual sovereignty, okay? Individual sovereignty means uh, internet has become like a fundamental human right lah now, okay? It's, it's when you think about uh, uh, electricity, food, Okay, all this now internet you, you can't live without internet so the next era uh, next revolution will be about web 3.0 so web 3.0 is all about empowering the individual so uh the the vision is that everyone will have uh, a personal wallet okay personal wallet means your personal address and you have control over this personal wallet because all your information all your uh transactions all your financial power is within your hands Okay, you don't uh, give it to any big corporate corporations to control. You uh, you basically hold custody of, of your own money. Lah. Okay, so the idea is that uh, you have the information and all the uh, financial power in, in your own hands, uh, privacy, okay, because you only need the personal wallet. So any, don't, nobody can know who is actually behind that wallet address unless the person already, uh, uh, what we call as exposed him or herself, lah, okay? And then, uh, of course, you have the freedom to interact and leave. Means, if you don't like a particular website, you can just disconnect your wallet and then you leave and then nobody can do anything about it. So, you compare that to, what, uh, for example, Facebook nowadays, okay, you uh, Facebook, uh, you, you can opt to delete your account. But how sure are you that your data is not there? You, you can never be sure because sometimes you have fine print by all these big companies. They might not delete your data. They might keep your data forever. So, you don't know. Okay, so that's the whole idea behind uh, Web3. And how does wallet come into this? Okay, this is what we're going to uh, explore lah tonight. So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you have heard about hot and cold wallets. Uh, it has nothing to do with the temperature. <laughs> okay, so so the idea of hot and cold wallet, what does it mean? Okay, hot wallet basically means uh, the wallet that is uh, connected to internet. Okay, so very commonly... Uh, now it's very uh, common we see a lot of browser-based wallets. So the most famous one is called MetaMask. Later I'll show you how to install it and how to actually operate it. Uh, then you have um, dedicated apps uh, that have their own mobile apps. So Arjun, Arjun is a, a very good mobile app wallet. Okay, then you have Trust Wallet. Trust Wallet also, I believe a lot of people uh, use Trust Wallet. And then uh, Coin98 is also very common, okay? Uh, and then, of course, you have centralized exchange accounts. So those of you who have already tried, you know, uh, create accounts on Binance, Luno, and Celsius, basically, you have a personal, I mean, a, a wallet address there already. 
but there is a difference. Okay, later I will explain what is the difference. So uh, you have to understand the difference between a centralized and decentralized uh, account. Okay, so for example, you go to Luno, when you create an account Luno, you have a personal wallet address, but you don't actually control the private keys. Okay, so centralized uh, exchanges or provider-based wallets, the difference is you don't hold the private keys. Okay, so for decentralized options, for example, Metamask, when you create the account, you have control over the private keys. So uh, there is a very important saying, uh, not your keys, not your coin. What does it mean? It means that if you don't have control over your private keys, basically you don't control your wallet. Okay, you, you cannot, um, how to say, uh, migrate your wallet. Let's say one day you, you don't want to use Metamask, you want to use another different wallet provider. You can't actually transfer it if you use a centralized account because you don't have control over it. But if you use a decentralized account from the start and you have the private keys, you can actually do that. So just remember that your private key is the most important aspect of security lah, on, on Web3. So uh, you think of it as your bank account PIN number. Okay, you don't, uh, you, you never share your bank account PIN number, right? So that's the same concept here. You don't share your private key to anyone unless you want the person to have access to your funds. So uh, when we talk about wallet, okay, wallet address, what is wallet address? Okay, so basically wallet address is a string of alphanumeric characters, okay, that represent your account on the blockchain. So this is like your bank account number. Lah. Um, one point, one important thing here is that uh, Wallet address actually can be the same across different uh, chains, uh, especially EVM com compatible chains. So you come across this term EVM com com compatible. So EVM means Ethereum virtual machine. Okay, EVM compatible chains means that those chains, they actually can interoperate uh, on some level with Ethereum. So Ethereum is the first uh, major smart contract blockchain that has a lot of decentralized applications on top. And then after that, you have Binance Smart Chain, we have Phantom, we have Avalanche and all that. So as long as that chain is EVM compatible, your address is actually the same. So let's say if my address is starts with 0, X, 2, 6, 2, blah, 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 uh, on Ethereum, I will also automatically have this address on the Binance Smart Chain. Okay, so if let's say you send me uh, some BNB, for example, even though I've never used BNB before, I will still receive it. Re receive it. So it's like saying, let's say you open an account in Maybank, uh, somehow or rather, your you will have uh, the same account number in CIMB, in Bank Rakyat, everywhere. Uh, so that is the, the interesting part of this uh, wallet address. Lah. Okay, so you can send funds to the same wallet address on different chains and the person controlling it will have access to that funds without making another new wallet address on that different chain. Okay, you understand? Uh? So uh, uh, this is provided you have the private keys, lah, okay? As long as you control the account, uh, this will apply. So you, you don't need to go, uh, let's say if you want to move funds from Ethereum to uh, Binance Smart Chain, for example, you don't have to make another new wallet, uh, account. So this is what I mean. So, Okay, let's see how to create a wallet. All right. So I actually already have uh, my MetaMask already here. Let me just remove it. Okay, I will uninstall everything. Okay. <clears throat> so first of all, you okay, you Google search for MetaMask. All right. Okay, you see this. Uh, go to the second uh, uh, result. So go to the from Google Store. Um, okay, so you'll see the Chrome Web Store. You have to uh, install this extension, okay, MetaMask. Okay, make sure that it's the correct one. So how do you know it's the correct one? Uh, it says here it has over 10 million users. Okay, it's from MetaMask.io. Okay, this is the correct one. Lah. Okay. Um, all right, so you click here, add to brief. Uh, I'm, I'm using Brave browser, but it's the same as Google Chrome. Lah. So you add an extension. Okay. Just wait for it to download. Okay, so far so good, yeah, guys. 
feel free to unmute if you have any questions, if you want to ask something, no problem. Because I can't actually see your chat here unless I go into my uh, mobile telegram. Okay, so we are still installing. Okay, all right. So MetaMask has been added to Brave. Okay, so the next step is, okay, it will, it will open up. Uh. Okay, welcome to MetaMask, get started. So if you are new to MetaMask, it has two options here. One is uh, if, it, if you already have a secret recovery phrase, which is the private key that I talk about. So let's say if you already have a private key, then you can import your wallet. So how does it look like? When you click import wallet, okay, I agree. So your 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 uh your private key actually is a sort of um uh, uh, uh twelve or sixteen phrases. Okay, these are uh words lah, basically random jumble of words. It can be anything. So basically, you paste your entire secret recovery phrase one two three four five six seven and until twelve. Uh, and it has to be the same order. Okay, meaning when you create your your private key and then you have it and then you want to recover it, you can in insert it one, two, three until number 12 in the same exact order and then you key in your new password. This password is to access this MetaMask wallet on this particular browser, web browser. Your password, confirm, and then import. Okay, that's all. So if let's say if you don't have a secret query phrase, let's say you want to set up a new wallet, so you just click create wallet, wallet, okay, you agree. So like I mentioned, the password here is just the password to access uh, this particular MetaMask wallet on this browser. Lah. Okay, when you create, you will see, okay, uh, you can just skip this. Okay, this is a very, very important part, okay? So this is the secret recovery phrase, which is the private key that I already mentioned. So you see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is a 12 phrase private key. Basically, it's your password for uh, your for, for this uh, uh, wallet. Lah. So you have to <clears throat> make sure that you keep this private key safe. Okay. For the purpose of this lesson, I will just uh, show you... Uh, Okay, I just copy paste and put it in the notepad. But this is actually very bad security practice, lah. Huh? So, but but just for show, uh, I show you uh, uh, what to do if it is your first time. So you copy paste and save it somewhere safe. But in actual fact, this is very bad because let's say if someone, some hacker get access to your computer, they open this, they have your private key, <coughs> they can just steal your uh, private key and then you will lose all your money, lah. So the safest way, actually, is to record down these words. Uh, you write it down on a piece of paper or uh, uh, use whatever physical method, okay? And then you lock it up uh, physically. So this is actually the old school way lah, because nowadays uh, hackers can easily get access to your computer. But anyway, I'll just show you the next step. So I have this uh, private phrase already. I'll just click, uh, click next. The next step is you have to input your private key back in the same exact order. So let's do it. Price runway morning in Fleet Lizard. Price runway morning in Fleet Lizard. Artifact afraid die safe. Artifact afraid die safe. Okay. Scrub together subway. Scrub together. Oh, sorry. Scrub together subway. Confirm. Congratulations, you have passed the test. You have kept the secret recovery phrase safe. It's your responsibility or done. All right. So now basically you already have a, a wallet address already. So where is your wallet address? So you see here account one. Okay. When you see, click on account details here. Okay. This is your uh, wallet address. It has, it's a it's a string of alpha numeric characters. There is nonsense. It's a jumble. Okay, blah blah blah. So basically, you can just copy paste this and keep it somewhere safe, lah. Or or because if you want to do a lot of transaction, this is the your bank account number, and this is who you are, who who uh how how people identify you, lah. Okay. And another thing about blockchain is it's actually very transparent. What I mean is anyone can go to EtherScan. Okay. Oops. What happened? Uh, 
per mine. So anyone can go to Etherscan and then uh, uh, see your wallet. Lah. Oh, hold on. Okay, some connection. Okay, so so Etherscan is a block explorer. and then you will see all the information for that address but you won't know who owns it okay you don't know so for example i already created this new uh, wallet address okay oxc1 352c so this is the address and ether scan tells me that this address has zero balance okay this is zero ether there's nothing inside that it's a brand new account <clears throat> all right so this is how you know your account has been created lah. all right Okay, so, okay, now, um, people ask me, uh, what's the difference between Metamask, okay, or Coinbase, uh, between uh, different, different wallets? So, basically, uh, the, all of them are pretty much the same, okay? Metamask is widely used because a lot of uh, the decentralized applications uh, use metamask i will show you why okay it's good but the user interface can be a bit clunky and, and clumsy lah. okay another wallet provider that i prefer nowadays is called rabi okay rabi by d bank rabi is really good okay uh but rabi rabi is good in the sense that it has uh, you don't have to tinker with the network okay later i will show you again how to uh, connect to different different networks. So Rabbi actually automatically has the networks already, so you don't have to uh, uh, do some manual work. Um, okay, you can use different wallets for the same address. Okay, meaning to say, I already have this wallet, okay, that I created just now. I can use Rabbi to access the same wallet address, no problem but I need to import the same private key for that address into the wallets. Okay? Uh, so, so you can do that. So I, I will show you what I mean, okay? So let's say if I don't want to use Metamask, uh, I prefer Rabi. You go back to Chrome Web Store. Okay, you search for Rabi. So Rabi is done by uh, the team behind D-Bank. Okay, there's a very, very popular uh, a company. Lah. Okay, so Rabi actually... It's a much more uh, easy to use wallet. So you make sure you're on the correct one, Rabi, Rabi.io, 30,000 plus users, okay? Okay, just get it. Okay, and then I will show you how you actually um, restore uh, uh, your, your seed phrase into a different wallet. Let's say if you want to switch your wallet provider, you can do that. Uh, your, you don't have to move your funds anywhere and uh, you just restore it, okay? So now we can see Rabi is already installed, okay? So let's say I want to get started. Again, same thing, your password, you set your password. This password is just to unlock your wallet on this particular browser, okay? So it's not the same as your seed phrase. So Rabi, you see the user interface is, 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 is much better. I really like Rabi. It asks you which network you want to access most frequently. So they already have all the networks here. So you don't have to key in one, uh, all these one by one, which is uh, what you have to do with Metamask. Lah. So let's say if I, I use a lot of Ethereum, I use a lot of Binance, I can just put it here. I can just put Arbitrum, uh, what else? Optimism, Polygon, okay, whatever I want. Okay, so yeah. next it asks you to please add an address. Okay, at this point, I can actually connect with my ledger. Let's say if I have physical ledger already, I can connect it here. Or I can import my private key or I can create a new one. So like just now, I already have my Metamask created. Let's say I want to use back the same wallet address. I can. So what do I have to do? You select this one, import via mnemonic. Okay. Then you have to paste in your private key. Okay. Copy. Paste. Okay, this is the private key. Eh? You click next. Then it will ask you which address that you want. Basically, it's the first one eh, because you only create created this one. We only created this one particular address for that one seed phrase, right? So this one you can ignore. So you create you select the first one. 
And tada, it says imported successfully. Congratulations. So now what happens is I have MetaMask. Okay, I have this 352C account here. I can also use Rabi to access the same account, 352C. Ah, this is the, the beauty of it. Lah. So you can basically uh, imagine that your, your, you have 1,000 ringgit. Okay, so if you don't like Maybank, you can use CIMB Bank to access that same 1,000 ringgit. So think of your funds as existing on the blockchain instead of inside your wallet, okay? That's how you can access your funds even if you uninstall your MetaMask here. So just now you saw me at the beginning, I uninstall my MetaMask, uninstall my Rebi, right? Uh, I don't have to worry because I have my seed phrase. Uh, let's say if this particular computer that I have now is uh, got virus and then I lost everything. I can buy a new computer, I just reinstall back my MetaMask, I import back my seed phrase, my funds will still be there. Okay, so this is the beauty of blockchain. Alright, so, so far so good. I hope everyone is still with me. Okay. So, okay, so we, let's talk about uh, wallet address on centralized exchange. Okay. So you can receive funds on your personal address on any centralized exchange, but you cannot export that same address for your own use. Why? Because you don't control the private key. So what is the use for wallet address on centralized exchange? For example, on Luno, Binance, KuCoin, Hobi, and so on. So it's best to receive funds for, let's say if you want to buy a coin, particular coin that has uh, uh, only Binance has it, for example or uh, you want to buy, let's say, a uh, pancake, uh, you know, cake. Uh, Luno doesn't have it, have it, okay? All the Malaysian exchange doesn't have it. So you need to go to Binance. So how you, you need to transfer my, uh, your funds lah to your Binance wallet address. Uh, <clears throat> your wallet address on centralized exchange, you can still use them to receive funds, but you cannot export it. What I mean is just now, as I show you on the MetaMask or Rabi, you cannot <coughs> you cannot import your your wallet from your uh, centralized exchange because you don't own the, the address. That is what I mean. So if you let's say if you want to interact with this centralized application, you need to have your own personal hot wallet. Okay, I show you what I mean. Uh, let's go to Curve. Okay, so Curve Finance is the uh, largest, uh, uh, how to say, application on, 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 on the Ethereum. Okay, uh, it's, it's very popular. It's one of the oldest. It has a lot of volume there for swapping, uh, all the different tokens. Okay, let's wait for it to load. It's a bit slow. Ah, okay, so Curve has loaded. So when you visit any decentralized application, usually MetaMask will pop up automatically. So this is what I mean by Web3 decentralization. You you don't need to make a new account every time you want to use uh, an application like this. So it, MetaMask will pop up and you ask you, when you, do you want to connect with this website or not? So, of course, yes, I want to connect. So I click next, click connect, and and connected to Curve, all right? So in the same way, I can use Rabi to connect as well. Just now I already connected with MetaMask. If let's say I want to connect with Rabi, <clears throat> what I do is I go to uh, the settings here. Hold on. Huh? Oh, there should be a setting that says the Okay, never mind. So anyway, you click MetaMask, you can see that this button here, it says it's connected. That means your MetaMask wallet address is connected to the uh, website. Lah. Okay. And then you can see uh, here, your address will appear here. If let's say I want to use a different wallet address to connect, 
can just change wallet. Uh, here is what I mean by uh, the services that can connect to decentralized application. So MetaMask will always appear in almost any of the Web3 websites. Then you can see the different different wallets, for example, Coinbase, Wallet Connect, Taurus, uh, all these. All these I never tried before. Like I only have Ledger. So if you want to connect directly with your Ledger, also can. No problem. So let's say if I if I want to use um, Rabi, I don't like MetaMask. Can I still connect with MetaMask? Yes, you can. Because Rabi basically has the same uh, code base as MetaMask. So it will it will recognize the Meta uh, Rabi as well. Let me show you. So let's say if I disconnect from uh, I want to disconnect from this website. Okay. Disconnect this account. And then I don't want to use my MetaMask anymore. Let's say I can just uh okay, let's let's log out lah. Okay, just lock it. Okay, can I still connect with Brabi? Let's try. So I click MetaMask. So instead of MetaMask. Rabi will show up, okay? So it's the same. The Web3, the, the application will recognize your Rabi wallet as well. Then you can choose which network you want to connect to, lah, okay? For this case, Ethereum. So I connect, see? Then it's connected, okay? It's connected. So this is what I mean by uh, using different, different wallets to connect to decentralized applications. So you can either choose uh, whatever that you, you like, lah. Okay, let's talk a bit about core wallets. So the difference with hot wallet is that core wallet, like I mentioned, the physical device, the ledger, uh, is, is not connected to the internet. So all these that I mentioned, MetaMask, Rabi, they are actually connected to the internet in the sense that they are in your browser. So if you are connected to the internet, your wallet is connected to the internet. So if you use core wallet, um, the physical device, the ledger, is not connected. But it can create new wallet addresses. Your funds can be inside there. But then it's an extra step of security. La. Let's say if you want to do transactions, you actually have to press the button on the physical device before the transaction will go through. So this is, core wallet is, is uh, extra security. La. So hackers, they actually can't really access your, your wallet address remotely. La. And every transaction before it goes through, it needs to be approved physically, I already mentioned. But... If you lose your private keys on the core wallet, let's say you create a new wallet address on your ledger device, uh, it's the procedure is the same. You will they will ask you to copy, I mean to keep the private key safe as well. If you lose that private key, it's actually the same as losing your private key on the hot wallet. There's no difference. So you still have to be careful. So the only difference with hot wallet is that uh it's a bit harder lah for thieves to steal your 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 money. Okay. Now the question is, if I want to use all this decentralized application, but I want to combine my hot and cold wallet. Let's say if I want to use MetaMask, but I want my funds to be on my ledger, can or not? The answer is can. No problem. Just now I already show you right on the Rabi. When you first set up your wallet, it has an option. Uh, it, it will ask you whether you want to connect with your ledger or not. So you can click yes, you connect with your ledger, then the pop-up will appear and then you just connect your ledger to your computer and then you select the address and then it will import it directly. So when the transactions need approval, you make sure your ledger is connected to your computer and then when you want to make any transaction, then you have to physically approve it by pressing the button on your ledger. Okay. Um, transferring funds. Okay. Um, basically, I already talk about the wallet address. Okay, you have to know uh, where you want to transfer. So the wallet address, like I already mentioned, is this one. Uh, okay, this one. So this is your wallet address. It starts with zero something something. It's a long string of alpha numeric characters. So when you want to transfer, you just copy paste the address lah. Let's say I copy this. Then I want to send. Okay, from my account to what account, I just paste it and how much I want to send and then you click send. So it's very simple. Uh, but for this lesson, I won't be talking much about it. Lah. So I will show in my next lesson. 
Okay, this is for transaction because transaction it requires gas fee. So gas fee is something that I'll talk about in the future. Okay, one last thing I forgot to talk about this. So Rabi actually can connect with different networks uh, because it's already inbuilt. But what about MetaMask? So MetaMask is a bit uh, tedious because you have to add the network manually. So what I mean by this, if you click here, you can only you can see Ethereum only uh, only Ethereum is here. So if I let's say I want to connect to Phantom, I want to connect to uh, Binance, you have to add it manually. So there is no function to to add new network automatically for MetaMask. So uh, there are two ways to do this. Number one, you have to go Google for the network name, the RPC URL, the chain ID, blah, 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 and then you click save. Then only it will appear down here. Okay, that is one way. Another way is let's say if i want to add binance i can go to binance bsc scan.com the block explorer uh, explorer for binance and then you go down here okay you will see at bsc network so if you click on this Uh, okay. Usually, when you click on this, there should be a pop up that appear asking you to add the network. Okay, seems like it doesn't appear. Okay, so this BSC scan doesn't actually work all the time, or maybe. I have to disable my pop-up. Okay, let's try again. Uh, no. Okay, never mind. There is another way. So you go to sushi sushi swap. Okay, sushi swap. Sushi swap is um uh exchange site lah. Exchange uh, uh AMM automated market maker. So. You go to the Sushi app. Wait for it to load. Okay, I will I will off my Rabi account first. Okay, so the MetaMask will pop up. <coughs> so I connect with my MetaMask. Uh, still Rabi. So this is a problem if you have two different hot wallet together because Rabi will always try to to. Uh, to be on top of MetaMask. So preferably you just have one, but for the purpose of this, I have two. But anyway, um, let's say if I want to, uh, let's see if there have been a or not. Okay, Sushi maybe is not a very good website. Uh, oh, here, okay. So you go here on top here, to change the network. So if I select BSC and then I click back to my MetaMask. Okay, manually connect it. Okay, click next, next. Okay, so my MetaMask is connected but it's still on the Ethereum network. So what do I do? Okay, let me try with. Uh, okay, let me lock it. Lock this Rabi first. <coughs> oh no. So this is quite annoying. Huh? Okay, you know what? Let's remove Rabi for now. Okay, let's try to refresh it. 
Okay, so actually we are still connected with MetaMask. But okay, let's say if I want to change to my BSC network, okay, you click BSC. Uh, so MetaMask will pop up and it will ask you, allow this site to add a network. The network is Binance Smart Chain, blah, 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 blah. So you can see that all these details will automatically appear instead of you going here and adding it manually yourself. Okay, so this is one shortcut. Lah. So when you click approve and switch, MetaMask will add this network into your uh, uh, account. So just now we only have Ethereum, right? Now we have Binance Smart Chain already. So if you want to do the same for other networks, you can do the same. Let's say Arbitrum. Okay, uh, MetaMask will pop up again asking you, do you want to add this network? Arbitrum, blah, blah, blah. And you click approve and you switch it. Now you are switched to the Arbitrum network. Okay, so this is the way of how you can quickly add networks to your MetaMask. So this is only for MetaMask. For Rabi that I already show you, Rabi actually already has all these networks inside there. So you don't have to do it one by one. So that is why I prefer Rabi lah. But of course, there is a downside to Rabi because sometimes the the up the nodes that they use the the address that they use sometimes can be congested. So your transaction might be stuck lah. But MetaMask is more flexible, but it's more complicated. Uh, you have to edit yourself. Okay. Oh. Alright, so that's uh, my last slide. So this is the lesson. This concludes the lesson for tonight. Uh, tonight's all about wallets on me. Eh? So, okay, so um, uh, hold on. I will off my camera. I wait. Stop sharing. Alright, so that's all for the sharing for tonight about wallets. Uh, anyone have any questions so far? You can feel free to unmute yourself, ask anything, and then we can answer. We can try to answer. Any questions about wallets? Yeah. Hello, uh, Dr. Yen. Can you hear me? Uh, hi, Mr. Lee. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I saw you mention uh, this uh, network very frequent. Uh, actually, what does this network do uh, and why we have to add so many different uh, networks? Uh? Okay, uh, network basically is the, the chain, the different chain. So we, we, we know that, uh, you know, Ethereum is the uh, major chain. Uh, okay, then you have uh, Binance Smart Chain, you have uh, uh, Phantom, you have many, many different chains. So these chains, they are, how to say, uh, think of them as different highway. Lah, okay, you have, you have the North South highway, you have the LDP, you have uh, whatever highway you have. So these chains, they have, uh, they have different applications. So let's say if you want to use, for example, that I showed just now, uh, let me go back to my screen. Okay, so let's say the example just now, I mentioned um, uh, Curve, for example. So Curve exists on different or multiple chains. So the difference being that, uh, let's say transactions, if I if I want to transact on Ethereum, for example, the, the, the tokens that exist on Ethereum, okay, the, 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 the pools, the, the, the tokens that exist on Ethereum, they are different from from the, on an, another network. So what I, what I mean by this. Okay, so like next, let's say now we are on the Ethereum network. No, we are on the, okay. We are on the Ethereum network. These are the pools that exist here. Okay, means the different, different tokens that I can swap here. Lah, okay, so if we go to a different network, let's say for example, Arbitrum, it will be different. It will be different, okay. So why is it different? Uh, because Ethereum is the first uh, network that, that existed and then uh, many developers uh, develop, create applications on Ethereum. So Ethereum is the first major ones. And then after that, you have alternative layers, uh, different, different 
chains. Lah. So for example, uh, Phantom, Harmony, Optimism, Polygon, all these, they are different chains. So number one, the tokens are different. Number two, the, the, um, the applications that you can find on these different networks are also different. So this example, for example, Curve, Curve Finance actually exists on multiple networks. So they have the same group of developers uh, who enable this application to exist on these different chains. But let's say if I go to a different application, for example, uh, Reaper Farm. Okay, Reaper, Reaper only exists on Phantom. So I won't be able to to uh, to connect with Ethereum network because Ripple only exists on Phantom. Okay, so so let's say if I go to Ripple, I want to connect. Okay, now MetaMask asks me to add Phantom. Okay, I approve. I switch it. Okay, uh, just refresh it. So Ripple Farm only exists on Phantom. Right, so you can see all the different different staking pools and all that. Then there is no option for me to change the network because uh, they don't exist on anywhere else except for Phantom. So, uh, so there is the difference between the networks. The, that is why we add the different networks. Uh, another thing is the 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 token that you have on one network it doesn't exist on the other. What I mean by this, let's say, uh, let's say if you go if I go to Ethereum network, okay. Um, this one is okay. So let's say on Ethereum network, I have zero. Uh, okay, for 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 just example sake lah. Okay, let's say if I have one Ethereum on the Ethereum net mainnet. Okay, one it shows one here. If I switch to Phantom, because Phantom uses Phantom for the gas, it won't show Ethereum here. So I I don't have the Ethereum on my Phantom account. You get what I mean. So this is the difference between uh, this is why why we have different different multiple networks lah, because uh they they it's very diverse. Uh, your tokens on one chain is doesn't exist on the other chain, although you can move it here and there. Yeah, uh, that's what we call bridging. Okay, uh, and, and and that is why lah. Hope that answer your question, Mister Mister Lee. Yeah, okay, now slightly uh, better uh, now. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ye. Okay, okay, no problem. Any Anybody else have any other questions? If not, then uh, we probably can end here. Um, thank you so much for coming here. Uh, this recording will be uh, put inside my, my website, but it's only for the premium members. Lah. So if you want to refer back and uh, see the notes, you can, but it's only for the premium members. Uh, so uh, if anything, you can just ask inside our group. Uh, I'll do my best to answer. And thank you for your time tonight. Uh, hopefully next week we'll do another lesson. Uh, we'll talk about... Uh, uh, I haven't thought of a topic yet. Uh, feel free to ask anything uh, or suggest any kind of topic. So I will, I will share on it next week. Um, hopefully we can do this every every week. Lah, once, one, one lesson per week. All right. So thank you all very much. Uh, and have a good night and see you again next week. All right. Bye.